message home. So let's begin today's session with that introduction out of the way. Um, we'll look at exam questions, like I said, from the ICAG, both level two and level three. And these will cover these tax types. So question one here is saying, it's from November 2017, and it's saying there have been misconceptions about the application of zero rated supply and exempt supplies under the VAT Act. In order to help clear this misconception, distinguish between zero rated supply and exempt supplies under the VAT Act of 2013, Act 870. This is for five marks, right? Now, before we begin, like we always do, this is a crash course. It is for those sitting an exam. Your exam period is almost here, and we need to remind ourselves that we have what it takes to pass the exam, that we are empowered, that we are capable, that we are ready, no matter how we feel, no matter how things look like. We know that come exam day, come results, they will pass our exam, we are ready. So let's, our classic mantra, as we've been using over the past four days, um, we're going to do that again today. So let's all go into the live chat section, um, the live chat section of the live stream, and type these words that we always, always use at the beginning of our um, crash course sessions. And it is simple. We are just going to type, I can, I will, and I must. So let's just type, I can, I will, I must. And this is just to remind yourself that exam is approaching, but come what may, you will pull together the resources, the ability, and the strength to pass your exam when it matters the most. Because it's just three hours on a single day, and all the work you've done over the past how many months? Five, six months? Will be accounted for within that short three hour period. Tell yourself that within that period, you'll be able to deliver. You can deliver, you can pass. You will deliver, you will pass. And you must deliver, you must pass. So let's type I can, I will. I must, I can, I will, I must. Good. With that out of the way, let's begin um, looking at the question. So back to this question here. What is the examiner asking us? He's saying there have been misconceptions about the application of zero rated supply and exempt supplies under the VAT Act. In order to help clear this misconception, distinguish between a zero rated supply and exempt supplies under the VAT Act. And um, that's the 2013 Act, Act 870. So, so that I provide value to all of you watching and not just tell you what the difference is and move on with our lives, let's try and summarize what VAT is in Ghana. And I'm going to use like a conceptual approach, right? This should help, because it's an exam you're about to write, this should help put things in perspective give you a framework within which to work with, give you a mental model to operate with when it comes to VAT in Ghana, right? So let's do this. And please follow me carefully, right? Good. So let's say when it comes to VAT, what is VAT? VAT is an indirect tax. So let's start. We have VAT here, right? It's an indirect tax, really. Indirect tax meaning what? It applies on the consumption of what goods and services right good so what does our law say when it comes to vat it says vat applies to the supply of what goods and services in ghana and to the import of goods and services in Ghana. So VAT applies to the supply, right? The supply of goods and services in Ghana and to the import of goods and services in Ghana, unless they are specifically exempt from VAT. So let's do this. This will flow out to this. And we'll say what? Unless exempt from VAT. So let's use this to understand. 
VAT applies to the supply of goods or services in Ghana and to the import of goods and services in Ghana unless these are what these goods and services or these imports are exempt from VAT, right? So what we can say is that VAT applies to literally everything unless that item, that good, that service is clearly what exempted from the tax. I'll say that again. VAT applies to the supply of goods and services in Ghana and the import of goods and services in Ghana or into Ghana unless these are what clearly exempt, in which case VAT will not apply. Now that we know this, the question we need to ask ourselves naturally is, who are the exempt people or what goods and services are what exempt? More like that, right? Because I've said that VAT applies to the supply of what goods and services in what made in Ghana or imported into Ghana unless exempt. Where can you find the exempt items? All exempt items can be found on what the first, the first shadow of the VAT Act, that's Act 870, right? When you go to the first shadow of Act 870, you see a very long list of things so things like you see it says um a live goat bred in ghana so a live swine that's a pig um live cattle things like table salt you see educational services a supply of pharmaceuticals in ghana you see things like um, um what a supply of crude oil and hydrocarbon products and it's distillate such as petrol diesel kerosene lpg natural gas you see things such as goods for the disabled, right? You see um, agricultural inputs and other things such as seeds. You see things like fertilizers. All of those things are clearly exempted from VAT. So it means if you supply those things or if you import those things, VAT will not apply. But if you are not listed on that list of exempt supplies, then VAT applies to you. Let's take that, right? So VAT applies to everything unless it's clearly listed on this shadow here, which is called the fair shadow or the exempt shadow of the VAT Act, in which case VAT will not apply. Now that we know what it applies to, the question is who must charge VAT? And then we come to that, we come to the, the concept of what? A taxable person. Because the supply must be made by a taxable person for VAT to ap apply in the first place. Take note, the first layer is that it must be a taxable supply, i.e., it shouldn't be an exempt supply on the fair shadow. If it is not on the fair shadow, it means what? It is taxable. But for VAT to be charged, the person making the supply must be what? A taxable person. And who is a taxable person? The law says a taxable person is anybody who is either registered for VAT or anyone who is what? Who is required to register for VAT. So either you are registered for VAT or you are required to register for VAT and you've not registered yet, right? So anybody who has registered for VAT or who is required to register for VAT must what go uh, must what charge VAT when they are making supplies that are not on the fair shadow. What are the rules when it comes to what registration for VAT? The law gives a general turnover um, threshold requirement where your taxable supplies over a 12-month period should what? If it is in excess of 200,000 Ghana cities, then you are liable to what? register for VAT and charge VAT. There's also the rule where you can use the quarterly equivalent of what? 50,000 Ghana cities over what? A three-month period. If you meet any of these turnover threshold, then you need to go and register for VAT, right? So it's either 200,000 Ghana cities over a 12-month period or 50,000 cities. That's a quarterly equivalent over a three-month period or if you foresee that over the next nine months you make the remaining 150,000 cities, then you must go and register for VAT. Take note, however, that this is the general turnover threshold rule. There are exceptions for persons such as auctioneers, for persons such as what promoters of public entertainment, and some government or um, local authorities, right? They have their special rules aside this general requirement. And we've covered this comprehensively in the VAT. Video. So take a look at that if you want to know the specifics. Now, despite this threshold rule and the exceptions I just mentioned for auctioneers, public entertainers, and all of that, there are persons who can voluntarily go and register for VAT. So this is where you are not entitled to register. You don't meet the turnover threshold. You are not an auctioneer. 
you're not a promoter of public entertainment, you're not an, um, a government body, but you want to go and register yourself, there are provisions for voluntary registration where you can walk to the commissioner general and say, I am not qualified to register, but register me. I want to charge VAT. In that case, the commissioner general will consider your case. And if he feels you are deemed, he deems you fit to register for VAT, he will register you. However, if you don't meet some conditions, such as you don't have a fixed place of abode or business, if he feels you not file your returns um, on a periodic basis, if he feels you not keep proper returns and proper books of account, he will not register you. So that is at his discretion, right? So that is it for taxable person. That's those who must charge VAT. Now, when it comes to a tax, every tax has what? Rates, right? So when we come to the rate of tax, we come to the rate of tax, VAT in Ghana is charged at what? So we have VAT at the rate of what? 12.5%, right? But this is something called the standard rate. So anybody who makes standard rate of supplies will charge VAT at a rate of 12.5%. There is a special 3% um, regime for persons who are called flat rate persons. So this is called the VAT flat rate scheme. This is reserved for wholesalers and retailers of tangible goods. So if these persons make supplies of goods in their capacity as wholesalers and retailers, then they charge VAT at a rate of 3%, but they cannot take an input deduction. They cannot take an input deduction. These um, persons under the flat rate scheme cannot take an input deduction, right? Okay, now VAT does not work alone. If you're a Liverpool fan, I am not. If you're a Liverpool fan, you guys see what? You never work alone. So VAT does not work alone. VAT works together with levies, right? And these levies are, we have one called the National Health Insurance Levy. This is at the rate of 2.5% and it is charged on all standard rate supplies that the VAT would normally apply on, right? So 2.5% National Health Insurance Levy is the first one. Then we have another one called the Ghana Education Trust Fund Levy. This also at a rate of 2.5% and it's also charged in addition to everything VAT is charged with, right? We would have ended here, but the Ghana Revenue Authority has said that effective 1st May 2021, we'll have a new guy called the COVID-19 COVID Health Recovery Levy. This is what at a rate of 1%, right? So... For your exam, those sitting in May 2021, take note that this will not be examined because your examiner does not examine you on um, laws that are just, what, one month old. So forget about it. But for those who may watch this video at a later time, take note that in addition to the NHL of 2.5% and the Get Fund Levy of 2.5%, you need to charge the COVID-19 Health Recovery Levy of 1%. Interesting thing is that the COVID-19 health recovery levy of 1% is also charged as part of what? The flat rate. So persons under the VAT flat rate scheme, that's the wholesalers and retailers, will be required to also charge the COVID-19 health recovery levy. But the NHL and Get Fund levy does not apply to COVID um, the flat rates, guys. Key thing to note is that both the NHL, the Get Fund, and the COVID-19 health recovery levy are not deductible as what input tax so you cannot deduct what do i mean by this you know in the nvat essentially is an input output mechanism based tax so in the end your tax or what you even do is it is you take your output tax which is essentially the tax on your sales if you are a person who deals in goods or the tax on your services if you're a service provider minus your input tax which will be the tax on your purchases if you're into goods or the tax that is paid on your inputs if you're a service provider if your output exceeds your inputs then you have a tax payable to the gra if your input exceeds your output then you have what a tax credit that can carry forward into future periods what i'm saying here is that the nhl the get fund 
and the COVID-19 levy cannot be deducted as input tax, right? So essentially, it's only the 12.5% VAT that can be recoverable as your input tax. Now that we know the rates as well, let us feed naturally into what um, compliance. When are the returns due? VAT returns are due on or before the last working day of the next month. So transactions in January will be reported in February, the last working day of February. Transactions in February will be reported um, and filed and any taxes paid on or before the last working day of March in that order. Please take note, it's not the 30th of the month, it's not the 31st, many people mix this up, it's the last working day. The last day that GRI officers will be in, in the office to collect your returns, right? It's the last working day and not the last day, not the last calendar day, right? So that's it. And to summarize, we have other rules around deductibility, time of supply, place of supply. And like I told you, this is supposed to summarize everything. You don't expect to get everything here, but this should give you a high level summary of VAT in Ghana. So take a close look at this. This is a summary of VAT. Now let's use this summary to ease naturally into the question. What did the examiner want you to do? They said what? People are confused about zero rated and exempt. He's saying in a, to help them clear this misconception, distinguish between what? Zero rated supplies and exempt supplies, right? I've told you what exempt supplies are. I'm saying they are what? Exempt supplies are the ones listed here on what? The fair shadow. Right? So they are the ones that VAT does not apply to at all. Like it has no business with VAT. Exempt supplies, if you gain an exempt supply, you don't have any business with VAT. So let's say for a business that only deals in exempt supplies, they don't even have to think about going to register for VAT. The point I'm making is remember I told you that if you have supplies exceeding what 200,000 cities over a 12 month period, then you must go and register for VAT. This is for those who have taxable supplies in excess of 200,000 Ghana cities. So if you deal in exempt supplies and it's even 2 billion B for billion cities, as long as it's only exempt supplies you're dealing, you don't have any business registering for VAT because you don't deal in what taxable supplies. So exempt supplies are supplies that do not attract VAT at all. They are outside the scope of the tax entirely and they are listed on what's the fair schedule of the act. What about zero rated supplies? Zero rated supplies. Zero rated supplies. These are supplies that are, number one, they are taxable supplies. So they are not like the exempt supplies that do not attract VAT. Zero rated supplies actually do attract VAT. Just that they attract VAT at the rate of 0%. Someone may ask, what's the point if they attract the tax, but the tax is 0%? What it means is anybody who supplies an a zero rated supply must actually charge this 0% and file a return. They have obligations under the law. And because this, their output is 0%, it means they are still entitled to input in some, obviously subject to some conditions. But if they have an input, they can deduct this input if all they deal in is what? Zero rated supplies. So take note, zero rated supplies are taxable supplies. Just that instead of applying these rates here of 12.5%, um, 25 2.5, whatever, you instead apply 0% because the law says your supply is a zero rated supply. Let me give you examples of zero rated supplies. Examples of zero rated supplies will be things such as what? A supply of services, right? So uh, let's do this. A supply of services, right? That will be what? To the extent that, so let's say, let's even put it this way, services to the extent that these services are consumed outside Ghana, right? So any service is applied to someone and that service is effectively consumed, that's effective consumption, 
right? It's based on something called destination principle and all of that. Based on this principle, right, if a service is supplied for consumption outside Ghana, then such a service will be what? Zero rated, right? Another one is what? A supply, any supply, right, to a free zone enterprise, unless a supply of goods to a free zone developer or free zone what enterprise as long as what requirements have been satisfied and they are duly registered as what um, um free zones entities the next is what export of goods provided that what so their conditions right Exports of goods provided that you have appropriately entered the goods for exports in accordance with what customs procedures under the Customs Act and Customs Regulations, and the Commissioner General is satisfied that the goods have indeed been exported from Ghana. Right. So generally, exports of goods will attract a zero percent VAT if you satisfy the conditions. Right. And the same for what exports of services, as long as you can prove that these are consumed outside Ghana. Now, zero retail supplies can be found on what the second schedule second schedule of what the vat act remember i told you that what the exam supplies can be found where the first schedule right so the first schedule contains what is exempt vat doesn't apply to it at all then the second schedule contains what what is taxable to vat just that applicable rate is what zero percent to so take note second schedule provides for these so to summarize the differences, right? And in an exam, let's come back to how you'd have answered this. This is for five marks. So you need to ensure that you don't just write one sentence and expect to make five marks. You need to make some valid points here, right? So you need to make at least, I would say make um, three points for each, even though that will give you six, but that, that makes you um, safe enough to know you're going to pass, right? So three points under um, zero rate supplies and three under um the exam supplies so let's start with let's say the question mentioned zero rated first let's start with zero rated supply so first point we'll make is that what a zero rated supply is any supply that is taxable but what at the rate of zero percent that's your first point a zero rated supply is a taxable supply just that the rate applicable is zero percent then you say these can be found on what the second schedule of the VAT Act. That's your first point. You can even split them into two to get your marks. So the first point you are making here is that zero rate of supply is a taxable supply at the rate of what? 0%. Next point is zero rate of supplies are listed on the second schedule of the VAT Act 2013, Act 870. Third point, you can see some examples of, so you give examples as your third point and you're done. Some examples of zero-rated supplies include what? Services to the, to the extent, so what I've listed here, right? To the extent that these services, right here, right, are consumed outside Ghana, supply of goods to a free zone developed power enterprise and exports of goods subject to what? Providing documentary evidence to the Commissioner General that the goods have indeed been what? Exported. You are done. Three, three points, right? Or 2.5, depending on the examiner. Then you come to exam supplies. Remember, I told you exam supplies are goods to which VAT does not apply at all. So you can see into brackets, these are what out of scope of VAT, right? So exam supplies are goods and services that do not attract VAT at all. They are outside the scope of VAT. Your next point you say is what well, exam supplies are listed on the first schedule of the VAT Act. Exam supplies are listed on the first schedule of the VAT Act. And your third and final point, you can give examples. I gave you many. Um, you can say um, some, some examples include a supply of goods for the disabled, a supply of table salt, right? a, um, a supply of um, crude oil and hydrocarbon products, including petrol, diesel, kerosene, LPG, natural petroleum gas, um, a supply of education services, a supply of pharmaceuticals in Ghana, um, a supply of ag agricultural inputs, a supply of um, animals, some animals raised or bred in Ghana, like goats and cattle and swine. Um, another example could be what um, 
domestic transportation, right? So domestic transportation by air, land, and all of those are also exempt from VAT. So we have so many items that are listed as exempt. There's even mosquito nets. I remember mosquito nets is also listed as what well, exempt from VAT. All of these is a long list on the fair schedule. If you can mention like five or six, you are gone, right? If you do this, you score five marks, right? So I use this particular question as an opportunity to kind of give you a summary of VAT in Ghana, right? Let's move to our next question. So the last question is from the May 2017 um, sitting. And here is from level three or back then when we had just one tax paper at the ICA at the level three. What's the requirement? They said the company seeks your views as a seasoned tax experts to advise on the possible tax implication of the above transaction also for five marks, right? So what do you have to do here? They're saying Eddie Enterprise Limited imported, so they imported a vehicle of 30,000 CDs and they were denied the claim of input on the import in 2014 on the vehicle by the GRA. Now in 2017, they intend to sell the vehicle for 26,000. Then they want you to advise them what will happen here. It means when they bought this vehicle for 30000 you know when you import a vehicle, I told you that was import of goods and services into Ghana also attract VAT, right? So when you buy a vehicle by way of import, you have something called import VAT. And you can deduct this, what, subject to the general deductivity rules under section 48 of the Act. So here they are saying GRA denied the company an input. They did not allow them to deduct. Now they want to sell this particular good this particular vehicle and they're asking you since i was denied an input i'm about to sell what am i required to do that is what the question is about for five marks and here the answer can be found in section 25 of the vat act that's act 870 right it's titled effect of denial of input tax so here you can see the examiner is just picking one particular section of the, the act and it's testing you for five marks. That's why I encourage students to acquaint themselves with VAT as much as they know their direct taxes because they are all examinable, right? And if you plan on pursuing studies, advanced studies in tax, so you want to go and do the Chartered Institute of Taxation Ghana exam after your ICA, over there you need to know your indirect taxes because you'll be caught once and you'll be found once and if you don't know your indirect taxes. They test a lot of indirect taxes. So please ensure that you cover these grounds if you want to um, um, pursue advanced studies in tax, really, right? So what does Section 25 say? It's very explicit, right? It's saying that where a person, right, or where a taxable person supplies goods or services, and then they are denied an input tax on the acquisition of the goods or services, then that supply of goods or services they are making will be deemed to be a supply of goods that is made other than in the course of federal of a taxable activity. What does this mean in the first place? All this means is that if you are a taxable person and you were denied an input tax when you acquired a certain good, when it's time to sell that particular good, that same good, right? Because you were denied an input deduction, we will not deem the supply you are making to be a supply made in the course or furtherance of a taxable activity. Let me break this down to you in very simple English. VAT is based on the concept of what? Give me a second. Um, okay. It's based on the concept of oops, an input-output mechanism, right? So... I told you earlier, you have your output tax, you have your input tax, now since the tax itself is called value added tax, it means it's a tax that is charged what, at every stage of the word supply chain or at every stage where value is added, that's essentially what it means. Now here, it means for every output there must be a corresponding input that will be deducted unless there will, this will be in special cases like the National Health Insurance Levy, the Ghana Education Trust Fund Levy, and now the new COVID-19 Health Recovery Levy, right? Those three are special cases. They are non-deductible. But generally, for every output you make, there must be a corresponding input. Here, once you are denied an input tax, we 
And I said that then don't worry about charging the output because we have broken the rule, right? So the rule I'm saying here is that in this question, the vehicle they bought, we can just say what the input tax of 30,000 CDs was denied, right? So as a result, the sale or into brackets, the supply of the vehicle for 26,000 CDs will not attract VAT. What this means is that the person making the sale of the vehicle must not charge VAT. Why? Because what? Say the VAT Act. So this is the reason why. Because the VAT Act deems such a supply. That's the car he's selling now. As a supply that is not. As what is okay? Let's use made, not done. A supply that is not made in the course of, or let's say, in the course or furtherance of a taxable activity. So the point really here is that VAT follows the input output mechanism. When I make an output and there is a corresponding input, allow me to deduct it unless there are special rules under section 48, like things like what entertainment deductions or entertainment expenses, such as hotel meals and other what entertainment expenses that you cannot deduct, or motor vehicle expenses, unless you're in the business of what dealing in motor vehicles or motor vehicles per part. In those cases, you can't deduct your um, input VAT that relates to motor vehicle and motor vehicles per part. For the entertainment, you can also deduct unless you're in the business of providing entertainment, right? So these two are the major ones. There's also one for subscriptions and stuff, right? But these are the main ones that you cannot deduct. We are saying that take those special rules aside. Generally, for every output I make, there should be a corresponding input. So if you have denied me an input I am entitled to, rightly, right? Then when I decide to sell that thing, you can't come and collect your output. That's it. At a very basic level, you can understand. If you take my right to deduct an output from me, when it's time to sell the good as what, um, sorry, if, if you take away the right to deduct an input from me, when it's time to sell the good, you can't come and collect the output. Right? So that's it at the very um, fundamental level. I was denied an input, so I don't need to what, charge an output. That's all, really. All right? Okay. So that does it for the second question. The next question is saying that Question three, and I carefully chose these so that at least we try and cover as much ground in VAT as possible, right? So that gives you a good idea. Um, this also from May 2017, level three, final level back then. Required is what is the tax implication of this transaction in light of the provisions of the VAT Act for five marks? Right, so Bosman Limited acquired assets for 10,000 CDs from outside Ghana but failed to claim VAT on imports of the asset in accordance with the VAT provisions. And they later sold the asset for over 12,000 CDs. So here, take note, they bought goods for 10,000 CDs from outside Ghana, but they failed to claim VAT. So here, they were not denied VAT. They themselves failed to claim it. It's their fault, right? Nobody told them they can't claim. They either they forgot or they negligently um, did not claim, right? So they failed to claim VAT on import of the asset in accordance with the VAT Act. And they later sold the assets for 12. Here, really, what the examiner wants to test you on is if you know the rules around what expiration of deductibility rights. What do I mean? Section 48 of the VAT Act provides that what generally input VAT claims cannot be made after a period of what six months have elapsed. So if you have an input VAT, let's say you have a VAT invoice, and six months have passed since the date of the invoice or since the right to accrue or the right to deduct that um, input has accrued. If six months have passed, you cannot deduct the input tax on this um, amount. So here, really, the answer I require to give is to talk about the fact that what we need to check if six months have passed since the day he got the, um, the asset outside Ghana. 
if six months have passed, then he cannot deduct the input. So here, don't forget that because he was not denied the right to deduct, but he forgot to deduct. All we need to talk about is the fact that what persons who um, are going to take an input deduction must check if they have met what the input deductibility criteria. So generally, like I said, let me give you an overview of these rules as well to give you a framework. When it comes to input deduction, right, the law is clear. I told you up there that some things cannot be deducted. So let's even start with those ones. So let's even talk about deductibility. Let's use this opportunity to revise. What am I writing? So deductibility, right? So generally, some things cannot be deducted. So if you are a VAT, flat rate scheme person, all you do is what? You charge output VAT at what? 3%. Take note that I mentioned that if the COVID-19 health recovery levy becomes effective from 1st May, then these flat rate guys will also need to charge what an additional 1% for the COVID-19 health recovery levy. But please, for your exam in May 2021, don't think about this, right? Okay, so these guys cannot get an input deduction. The VAT flat rate scheme guys cannot, cannot get an input deduction at all right that's the first layer when it comes to deductibility they can only charge output they can't deduct inputs that's step one apart from the vat flat rate scheme guys let's come to the standard rate guys those who are the normal guys who charge normal vat right at 12.5 percent so we call them vat standard rated suppliers right so these kind of suppliers will charge what output VAT at what 12.5% and then what will happen this output VAT will be charged on top of some taxes right so their output VAT is not done still under output VAT this will be charged in addition to what 2.5% National Health Insurance Levy, 2.5% Ghana Education Trust Fund Levy, and please, 1% COVID-19 Health Recovery Levy. Those of you writing in May, assume you didn't see this, it doesn't exist to you, right? Because the examiner will not test you on this. It's less than a month old as at this time of I'm recording. So take note that those who are sitting in May, the output VAT will be 12.5%, charged on top of the NHL and get fund to give you an effective VAT rate of what 18.125%. If you want to see how this is done, I have a fully solved video on how to compute VAT. Uh, check the Tax Academy library videos on past exam questions. Yeah, there's one there on that. So let's not waste time doing something we already have a, um, a resource on. Take a look at that if you want like a full question on how to compute VAT when they give you the output, the input, the deductibles and all of that. Right, so that we can focus on um, those who don't know that in, in, I mean, those who know that in this session, which is you close to an exam, right? Okay, so that is the output. Now, when it comes to the input side, input VAT or input deductibility, those under the standard rate can only deduct what the 12.5% VAT. So this is what they can deduct. Right, this can be deducted. However, if they have invoices that include the 2.5% 2 NHIL, the 2.5% GET Fund Levy, and now the 1% COVID-19 Health Recovery Levy, all of these cannot be what deducted. So let's see if they have any of these guys. NHIL, GET Fund, and this guy cannot be deducted. Please take note of this. Right, They cannot be deducted. So... This is the first layer when it comes to deductibility. Then apart from this, Section 48 of the VAT Act gives us additional rules, such as, for example, you must be in possession of a VAT invoice. So if you want to deduct VAT, you must have the Commissioner General's invoice, the one GRE has issued, unless you have been given a special dispensation to issue your own invoices, in which case 
those ones to suffice if not you need a commissioner general's invoice to be able to charge next is that the supply must be a taxable supply so you cannot if someone mistakenly charges you vat on an exempt supply remember exempt supplies are the ones listed on the fair schedule right so if someone mistakenly charges you vat on an exempt supply that supply is not a taxable supply so you can't come and take an input deduction of something that is not taxable right so the supply must be a taxable supply you must be in possession of a taxable invoice or a tax invoice from the gra right and if it's an import you must have the relevant customs import declaration form apart from all of these and several others you cannot make a deduction on anything let me do this um, so inputs vat right after six months so please take note if let's say you deal with someone on first january 2020 they issue an invoice to you the invoice is dated first january 2020 forget about getting an, an input deduction in the year 2021 six months have passed long ago you can only deduct invoices or input vat on invoices within that six month period Take note that I said that NHL and Get Fund and the COVID-19 levy are not deductible at all. Only the 12.5% VAT is, is deductible here, right? But however, even this 12.5% VAT that is deductible, it must be within the six-month period before you get that deduction. And you must have what the GRA invoice unless what the, the supplier has a special dispensation to issue their own invoice. It's like the shopping malls. If you go to ShopRite or Game, they don't write a manual invoice for you. They just print on a machine, right? So those ones, because they have their own GRA approval to use their own machine to print their invoices. So those ones can be um, deducted as input VAT. So here in this question, all you are, you are required to talk about is the fact that, well, discuss general rules around VAT input output, right? Um, talk about the fact that there is a six-month rule and that six month rule must be complied with, right? If the invoice is older than six months, then he should forget getting a deduction for what the VAT on this 10,000 right here, right? He won't get a deduction on the 10,000 when he sells the 12,000. So it means in this case, if six months have passed, then what will happen is that on this 12,000 that he's selling, right? He'll only charge output VAT. But he can't get an input deduction. But I can also mention that if, however, the 10,000 series input was incurred less than six months ago, then he can deduct the input VAT on the 10,000 when he's selling the output on the what? The 12,000. Then he files the difference. If the output is greater than the input, then he pays to GRA the difference. If the input is greater than the output, then he has a tax credit he can carry forward. Take note of this. So that's all you need to answer that particular question so take note this has been an attempt an attempt really that's what it is to summarize vat it's 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 a huge task right it's a lot of principles to to talk about there are special rules for time of supply there are rules for place of supply there are different rules even around refund like i said VAT has its own series on this channel. Like there are so many videos on VAT telling you that it's a very broad topic, right? So this has been my attempt to use um, three exam questions to kind of give you an, an idea of the very important areas you need to look out for. But at the same time, remember that there's a lot more to VAT than just these areas. So like I said, if you are looking for a question on VAT where we've solved a numerical example based on like numbers, right? Check the, I think it's the playlist. It's called Tax Academy Pass Exam Library, right? Just take that, check that playlist. You see a video on value added tax, the, 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 the description is a um, value added tax pass question or pass exam questions. It's over an hour long. It's actually a chartered Institute of Taxation Ghana exam question on VAT. So it's a good revision uh, material. Take some time and watch it, right? It goes through how to compute VAT when you are given the inputs, the output, what should be deductible and not, and add that to your studies on VAT to prepare you for VAT in your upcoming exam. So let's not waste time doing another numerical example when we have one on the channel already, right? Let's move on to something called withholding VAT. Let me help you understand what 
this is all about and even on withholding VAT we have another fully solved numerical exam on the channel so take a look at that as well but here I will do the numerical exam example um, to kind of illustrate my point and make the message clearer for you to understand so let's look at this question here this was from May 2020 very recent right so this was in the May 2020 exam but this was level two principles of taxation right and required us to compute the VAT withholding taxes and this is for three marks right so here it said these people have the weirdest of names you know um Mutumna limited is a manufacturer and the invoiced goods valued at 20 million CDs to Lam Lam Limited, a resident company located in the western region of Ghana. Lam Lam Limited has been appointed as a VAT withholding agent, computes the VAT withholding taxes. So let me use this opportunity to teach you withholding VAT. Um, the entire lecture for withholding VAT, I think it's one video, just one, right? So please take a look at that, right? It's, I, I can confidently say with a 125% confidence level that after watching that video, there's nothing about withholding VAT that you will not know. Like that's how confident I am um, about the level of coverage, the level of depth we went into that. It's a very short video actually. It's not our, one of our longest videos. It's less than 30 minutes, I guess. 20 something minutes, yeah. And it covers withholding VAT end to end, like back to back, right? So please, if you want to understand withholding VAT well, take a look at that video. In addition to that lecture video in the Tax Academy Library, we have a fully solved exam question video as well on withholding VAT in the past exam library um, playlist as well. So that's a lot of resource for you when it comes to withholding VAT. But here, because it's a crash course, and we need to give you essentials to pass your exam in the next few weeks. Let's summarize withholding VAT in a way that will make it easy for you to understand. And let's give you a framework to help you conceptualize things in your mind, right? Okay, so here, let's talk about withholding VAT. First point we need to make is that, as the name implies, it is a withholding tax of some sort, right? So let's even try and differentiate between what withholding tax and withholding VAT. Withholding tax here is an income tax concept. This is a VAT concept. What do I mean by income tax concept? Withholding tax, the traditional one you all know, the one that you, you say... When you say interest is 8%, dividend is 8%. When you say commissions to sales agents is 10%. When you say goods are 3%. When you say works are 5%. When you say services are 7.5%. That withholding tax you mean is income tax withholding. This one right here. That is not the subject of withholding VAT. Withholding VAT is a separate animal. It's a VAT concept. The mechanism is similar. That is, when someone is making payments to someone, instead of paying them the full amount, they take a certain percentage and pay that amount to the GRE, right? The key difference between these two is that for withholding tax, almost everybody charges and withholds tax, right? So here, with the exception of individuals except in conducting a business really, right? Everybody, when making payments, must charge. So let's say any company making payments to anybody must withhold, really, based on the particular transaction it is. So if you are someone provides you with a service and you are making payment to them, you must withhold. If it's rent you are paying, you must withhold, right? Apart from you individuals, because Jerry doesn't trust you, right? But everybody must withhold. Withholding VAT is based on appointment, right? Based on appointment. And please, if you watch our video, you understand this even better. So here, the GRA must appoint you as a withholding agent for VAT before you can even begin withholding. So it is for a select few. Not everybody withholds. That's the first point, right? It's for a select few. GRA must have appointed you as a withholding VAT agent. What happens when you are appointed? You must withhold what? So after appointment, you must withhold 7% of the standard rated amount 
of what taxable supplies so anytime someone supplies you with a taxable supply that is standard rated if you are an appointed agent when you are making payment to them you would hold seven percent of that amount and pay to GRA on the 15th day of the next month right the same day that withholding tax on income tax is due and after withholding this seven percent amount you are required to do something which is to issue a VAT withholding certificate to the person you withheld on as proof that what you indeed withheld, right? Or to prove that what they've indeed been withheld on. So really, to summarize, withholding VAT is a VAT concept, right? It is based on what? Based on appointment. And once you are appointed, you must withhold 7% of the standard rated amount when making payment. And you must issue a withholding VAT or VAT withholding certificate to the person upon withholding. And obviously, you file your return and pay the tax to the GRA 15 days after the month has ended. Right? So this is high-level summary. Like I said, there's a video that covers this end-to-end. -end. Take a look at that. Let's apply this to the question. They are saying that the company is a manufacturer. So they are a manufacturer and they've been invoiced goods valued or they've invoiced goods valued 20 million to another company that is resident in the Western region of Ghana. The company they invoiced has been appointed as a VAT withholding agent. Remember I told you that withholding VAT or VAT withholding is based on what? Appointment. So if you are not appointed, you can't withhold. This question is saying that the person this company invoiced has already been appointed by the GRA. So it means what? They must withhold when making payments to Mutumna Limited. And they are asking us to compute the VAT withholding taxes applicable. Very easy question for three marks. Let's do this. So here, what we need to do is that we've been asked to compute the VAT withholding tax, right? Good. So the question we need to ask ourselves is this 20 million here. Give me a second. This 20 million right here. Do you agree with me that it includes VAT, right? Because everybody when they are invoicing will charge VAT. So if you want to find how much withholding VAT will be applicable, we need to work back to get the base that is the withholding VAT base. What do I mean by this? So we need to say that this 20 million cds is what is inclusive of vat nhil and the get fund levy right and please take notes i am assuming at this date we've not started the covid 19 health recovery levy so not to confuse anyone i will not include it in this question if you happen to watch this video after 22nd april 2021 my disclaimer is at this date we did not have the covid 19 health recovery levy thank you very much all right let's continue um so this 20 million cities is inclusive of vat nhl and get fund levy right okay and the base for withholding vat watch here what did i say is the give me a second um the standard rated amount right so it is the base on which you compute VAT so we need to strip out the taxes and get the raw base right I'm sure you are aware that the effective VAT rate is 18.125 percent right if you don't know how I got this we have a video for that but let me just quickly run you through if your cost is 100 NHIL 2.5 percent get fund 2.5%. If you charge all of this, it gives you a base of 105. If you compute VAT at 12.5% on this, the effective you get is what? 118.125. If you deduct your 100 CDs, it gives you 18.125%. Once again, let's not waste time on this. Like I said, there's a numerical example fully solved. Just know that it will give you an effective 18.125. Okay. Let's not waste time on the very small things. So if the effective rate is 18.125, that is what I'll use to strip out what the tax amount entirely. So what, what will I do in this case? So 
in this particular scenario, I know that what my inclusive figure is 20 million. So if I'm even using the normal relation I usually do, so if C plus B equals S, where S is my inclusive figure. So here I know my C will be my cost base, which is 100% all the time. The P, which will stand for a profit margin, but it's not really profit, will be what? The amount of VAT, which is 18.125. So I put here 18.125. So it means my selling price will be what? 118.125, right? So let's use ratio and proportion. We'll say that if 118.125, so if 118.125, that is the S, equals 20 million, then what to C be? I want to find the one exclusive of taxes. So C stands for 100. So 100 will be what? I can put X here and cross multiply. Or I can say then 100 over 118.125 times what 20 million will give me the portion. So let me get my calculator. Give me a second. Um, 100 divided by 118.125 times 20, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 gives me 16 9312162690 so this is the amount exclusive of all taxes please take note this amount is what is exclusive of all taxes right this 16 million i just found here it's an exclusive of VAT, of NHL, of get fund levy, everything. So we've come back to square one, right? Now we want to find the base for withholding VAT before we withhold. Remember I told you here that the base of withholding VAT is what the standard rated amount. The standard rated amount is the amount right here, which is what? The 105. Or to put it simply, the amount for standard rate or the standard rate amount is the amount on which you compute VAT. Remember, we said we compute VAT on top of the levies, right? So you pick the base amount, you add the 2.5% get fund levy, the 2.5% NHIL, and then the total is what you compute VAT on. So if we have the 16931 being exclusive of all taxes, let's top up with the levies and then we will charge VAT on that, right? So let's do the cost build up. We say exclusive amount. Will give us what 16931216.90. Any child at 2.5% will give us what? Get fund levy. So this is T at 2.5% will give us what? So let's find 2.5% of this figure. So this gives me 4232.480. It will be the same for the get fund 423 280.42. So let's add everything together, right? So this times 2 plus 16 I got 17 million 777 777.7. Wow, what a number! 0.77. Or seven zero, I guess seven seven. All right, so this is the what um the tax base for VAT. So if the question asks us to compute the VAT payable, then I would have computed twelve point five percent on this figure. But the question doesn't want the VAT payable. They want the withholding VAT payable. And I said withholding VAT will be at the rate of what? 7% on the standard rated amount. In other words, the withholding VAT is 7% on the same base for VAT, right? So all we we'll do is we we'll compute withholding VAT at 7% on the same base. So let's find 7% of this 17777 guy, right? So calculator this figure times 0 0.07 this gives me 1 million 244 444.44 4, 4. 
So this is the withholding VAT amount that you need to compute. If you're able to do this, you will score three marks. Take note of how withholding VAT is computed. It is computed on the base inclusive of what the NHIL and get fund. So take the transaction amount, compute NHIL, compute get fund 2.5% each, add them together and com compute 7% on that. But it depends on what the question gives you. The question gives you the tax exclusive figure, then do it straight away. Take that figure, compute 2.5 NHIL, 2.5% get fund, add everything times 7%. If the question gives you inclusive of taxes, then you need to work backwards to get the exclusive figure before you compute the amount, right? So take note that is it for withholding VAT, All right? Let's move to a different tax type, which you find interesting. This is on customs duty. So let's use this opportunity to learn some customs duty, customs and international trade taxes, right? Another area that is also examined from time to time but which most students are not comfortable with. So let's look at customs duty in this particular um, case. So in this particular question, you can see it's way back November 2015. So this is going to be an adapted question. By adapted, I mean I'll solve it using what the laws and rules as of today. Because 2015 is a long time ago. And we've not had such a question, I guess, in a while. So I feel this is one good way to... Revise our understanding of customs and international taxes and see how well we can um, conceptualize this particular topic. Now, when it comes to customs, um, the whole idea is that these are, or customs duties are taxes charged at the ports, really. So if you import things into Ghana, you need to pay some taxes. You need to pay some levies. You need to pay some fees, some charges, right? There are so many of them, right? I'll run you through them um, quickly. Right. So let's do the question first, and then we can take a look at these different um, rates where applicable. Okay, so here, what's the requirement? They said, using the above, compute the taxes payable under both the ad valorem and specific methods. If you don't know what it means, ad valorem means what? On a value. Specific means specific. Right? Simple. What I mean by this is ad valorem is based on the value. So if we say something is, let's say, 25% on a value, it's an ad valorem tax. So it means whatever the value is, which is X, that's what the ad valorem will be. So the higher the value, the higher the tax, because the ad valorem, I mean, the tax is based on the value, right? A specific tax is based on a, a fixed quantity. So they can say you pay, um, let's say, 18 pesos per kilogram. Right, this is a specific tax. If you have two kilograms times two, you are done. Right, it doesn't fluctuate based on value. It's a specific tax. If you bring in two kilograms, you pay eighteen pesos. I mean, um, times two that's thirty six pesos. Right. So the whole idea is, ad valorem taxes are based on what the value of the good is dependent or contingent on the value of the good or service or the transaction. Whereas specific taxes are fixed, fixated. Right. So here the requirement is. We're going to compute customs taxes based on ad valorem and specific. Um, let's see how this goes. Then they are saying after this, we'll advise the government on which method will help them achieve their intended objective and to give reasons why. So let's read the question. The government intends to discourage drastically the importation of television sets and rather create local demands for South Electronics. Do we have TV makers in Ghana? Apart from Kantanka. Anyways, so they intend to discourage um, importation of TV sets and rather create local demands as part of efforts to grow made in Ghana products. Do we have OLED TVs in Ghana? 4K panels? No, we don't, right? So we'll still import. Anyways, um, the following data is relevant. They are saying 4,000 pieces of TV sets at a cost of 2,200 CDs per one were imported in March 2015 from the USA by Camus Enterprise. The cost of freight was 100 CDs per TV set via KLM airline. Additional duty, rate of duty, they say is 20%. So this would be the, what, the ad valorem rate. Rate of duty is what 80 Ghana CD per TV set. This would be what the specific rate. 
take note most of our if not all our customs and fees and whatever are mainly what at valorum they're not specific right so here's just an exam they want to see what it would be if we chose a specific um, approach okay so here they're saying using the above which compute taxes payable it's an interesting question and i'll tell you why shortly because they put in something that i know not many students know but i'll teach you here it's about the valuation of insurance when you don't know what the value is so when we as we start this there's something called cif value that i want to introduce you to this is the cost insurance and freight value so the cost of the good you are importing and cost is a whole breakdown it's not just how much you bought it for but several other things going to the cost such as the cost of packing the cost of arranging and ensuring that the goods are in a saleable condition all of that insurance is essentially what how much you pay to what insure the goods as part of its inco terms on its way to ghana and then freight is what how much it costs you to transport it really that's all so when you add your cost plus insurance plus your freight you get something called cif value cif value will be used by so many different taxes as their base so so many of the taxes we will see shortly are based on cif value and um, there's something also called fob that is the free on board value um that um will be applicable so there's a charge called the GC net charge that is at 0.4% on the FOB value, right? But that's not too major. So that's not stress over it. So we'll use the CIF a lot. So first thing we need to do in this question is to determine what the CIF value is. That's the first thing we need to do. What is the CIF value in this particular question? So because CIF is the base for many taxes, let's just do the build up here, right? So they said we should do both what? watch here. Give me a second. This is your compute word what add valor. Oops, not you. Um, this is your compute both the add valor and the specific methods, right? So let's start. Let's do the add valor first. So we say using the add valor rem method okay so let's find the cost insurance rate value right so as usual we have our information in ghana cities so what is the cost right what did they tell us they said four thousand pieces of tv at a cost of two thousand two hundred per each tv right so the cost of the tv will be what we have what 4,000 CDs, I mean 4,000 TVs at what? 2,200 per one. That's all. That gives us the cost. So let's calculate her. Um, 2,200 times 4,000. This gives me 8.8 .8 .8 million, right? So 8,800,000. Right? Good. Now, this is where it gets interesting. You know, usually they'll give you the cost figure, they'll give you the insurance figure, and they'll give you the freight figure then you add the three together to get your cif here you can see the question gave us cost and what they gave us freight but there's no insurance you can see here they said the cost of freight was what 100 cds per tv set so you let's bring it here the freight cost they said it's 100 ghana cds per tv set so how many tv sets did you bring 4,000 tv sets times what 100 cds each okay what will this give us this is clearly 400,000. Now, this is where, let me teach you something you probably did not know. If you know, please type it. If you knew this, type it in the comments. Okay, we'll, we'll give you a special reward, right? Okay, so when you go to the, I need more space for this. When you check the customs regulations of 2016, that is LI 2248, right? Under regulation... 95 which deals with insurance of goods under import it states clearly that where somebody imports goods right and the goods are subject to the ad valorem um, 
valuation rules and they do not ensure their goods then they will what automatically be computed an insurance value right where goods are not insured where they don't have a specific insurance figure then insurance will be added based on what how they transported their goods so if they transported their goods by air right so if it's air transport then the insurance will be what one percent of the cost freight value the cf value so you add cost and freight compute one percent and that is it if they transported the goods by c then this will be what 0.875 percent of the cost and freight value this is very deep information and i don't know why they tested it at this level but well it is what it is right so please learn this right so where the goods are transported by air and there was no insurance then the automatically computed insurance provided by law is that it's one percent of the cost freight value if it's transported by c then it's 0.875 percent of their cost and freight value so let's go back to the question did they tell us this is by air or by c i remember seeing klm airline can you see here via klm airline so this is clearly by air if it's by air what did i say i said it's going to be what one percent from here right one percent okay so let's add the c and f together to get the cost freight value and compute one percent on that to get what our insurance value let's come back here so let's just write cost plus freight so let's just add 8.8 .8 and 8 i mean 400 000. that should give me 9.2 million so now that i have this i can compute what my insurance which is one percent of the cf value right so what will be one percent of nine point two million that will clearly be what ninety two thousand that will be ninety two thousand right so now that i have the i and i have the c and the f i can have what my cif value so my cif value can now be what the ninety nine point two plus the 92,000. So this will give me 9292, right? Zero, zero, zero. So this is my CIF value, right? This is my CIF value. Now that I have my CIF value, what do I need to do? It is clear. I can now go ahead and compute my different taxes. First thing we need to know is that the duty or import duty is computed on the CIF value. So here, first thing I need to compute is my import duty. And since we are doing specific, the question said what? Use 20%, right, from here. So we just compute what? 20% of CIF value. That is a 9292000. So let's compute 20% of this times 0 0.2 gives me 1858 okay 1858400 so this is my import duty um value right and we are not done there are so many other taxes we could compute such as VAT and HI I'll get fine and the list goes on and on and on and on right but really what is the point here the question is saying, like I said, it's adapted, right? It's adapted. So let's have some creative freedom here to do what we want to do. We know that we have the import duty. Now we need to compute NHIL and get fund levy, right? NHIL and get fund levy is computed on the tax basis or CIF plus duty, right? So let's add CIF plus duty. So this will give us CIF plus import duty, which will serve as the base for my NHIL and get fund levy. So let me add the two together. 9292000 plus 1858400 gives me 11. 
15400 so here i've determined my what this is my cif value which was the base for my what my import duty i now have my cif plus import duty which will serve as the base of what my any child and get fund levy like i said please let's ignore covid 19 health recovery levy it's not here yet for your exam so here i'll compute my any child at 2.5 percent on what cif plus import duty right now also compute my get fund levy at 2.5 percent on my cif plus import duty value right so this 11 um 15400 let's find two percent i mean 2.5 percent of this that gives me 278760 it will be the same for get fund 278760 then the base we get will be called cif plus import duty plus nhil plus get fund levy and this will be the base for vat take note this will be the base for vat so let's add them together 278760 so this times 2 plus 11 150 400 i got 11 seven zero seven nine two zero so this figure of okay no not this yes this figure of eleven seven zero seven nine twenty will be the base for VAT. so i can now compute what my vat at 12.5 percent on this figure so this times 12.5 gives me i got one four six three four nine zero if i add this to this it gives me so plus eleven seven zero seven nine two zero this gives me thirteen one seven one four one zero so this amount here is what my amount inclusive of what import duty vat nhl and get fund levy right but take note these are not the only things you are charged at the port there are so many other taxes duties levies and so on that are charged at the port that you also need to be aware of please let's remember this there are other ones for example we have the ECOWAS levy which is 0.5 percent of cif value there's the africa union import levy of 0.2 percent of cif we have the exim levy or the export import levy of 0.75 percent of cif then some people pay a processing fee of one percent of cif then if you are importing a used vehicle there can be one percent on the cif then um, there's a gc net charge of 0.4 percent of the free on board or the fob value um, in so many other cases there's a special import levy even of a two percent um, amount on the cif value so all of these are different rates that could apply among several 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 others right so the examiner cannot realistically expect you to compute all of these as long as you have the basics which will be the customs duty which do provide the rate for you because generally the law gives us um we have something called the harmonized system or the hs code which is based on the com um, ECOWAS common external tariff classification system and that gives us really a rate of between 0% and 35% um, percent based on the classification of the good. But here the examiner said let's use 20%. So that's what we'll stick to. So this is an adapted question computed based on current law. It will not be the same as the solution when you check. Um, just take note of that. So this is it for the, I mean, the ad valorem computation. So let's look at how things would have been if it was the specific system instead, right? If it was specific and to save space and to save time i'm not going to recompute anything the ones i can even clean from here i'll do that directly so if i am to do so let me clean this using the specific so please let me just modify this okay to not duplicate efforts so using the specific system how will things look like so specific it is still based on what cost insurance rate right just that you are not using a rate by a specific or fixed amount. So cost will remain the same, right? So 
this 8.8 here will remain it won't change the freight here will not change cost plus freight will not change the one percent because it's air will not change even the cif value will not change what will start changing is from here which is what the import duty rate because it will not be 20 percent cif this is ad valorem so we need to change this to what specific and change this so everything from here is what will change right what did the question tell us they said the rate of duty is what 80 cds per tv set if it's 80 cds per tv set then we need to what compute based on that so if it is fixed so it's going to be what ghana cd 80 per tv set how many tvs did they bring in this question it is right here as what 4000 right so we we'll use times 4000 that will be a fixed duty so 80 times 4000 will give me 320000 okay so this is the only thing that is going to change ladies and gentlemen and because it changes it will subsequently affect what all my other taxes so this is the import duty that will be different right so because of this my cif plus import duty figure will change this one will change nhl will change get fund will change so let me make all these changes so my cif plus import duty will now be 9292000 plus 320,000 that give me 96 so this is 9612000 so this is my cif plus import um figure now i need to compute any child 2.5% on this in that order right so let's just do this times 0 0.025 so this will give me 240,000 300 then this one is also 240 300 so my cif plus import plus nhl plus get fund figure will also change and then my vat will also change right so let me compute this with so this 240 300 times 2 plus 9612000 this will give me 10 zero nine two six hundred but before i even clean and forget please let me write this figure somewhere the first one gave me thirteen one seven one four one zero okay so i can peacefully clean now i was going to clean and forget what i got okay so now let's compute vat on top of this ten zero nine two figure right so this times 12.5 will give me one million two six one five seven five right okay now when we add the two together so this will give this is the specific when we use specific this is what we got right so let's find ad valorem so this will give me so this figure plus ten zero nine two six hundred gives me so this can go 11 3 5 4 1 7 5 so this figure here is the total amount payable by way of what import duty national health insurance levy import import Ghana education trust fund levy and import vat 11.3 so this is what if i use oops what did i say here sorry this is rather what ad valorem excuse me so this is ad Valorem. and this is rather the specific yes sorry about that <clears throat> this is ad valorem and this is specific okay so now that we have done this right let's go to the question we've computed the a part they said what using the above compute taxes payable and the ad valorem specific we've done that so we have our six marks now, right? Second question is advise the government on which method would help them achieve their intended action and why for two marks. Very simple and straightforward. 
Let's go to the question. The government intends to discourage drastically the importation of TV sets. If you want to discourage importation, what would you do? You are looking at a policy that will what, lead to higher prices. So if you look at this, it's very obvious that if they use the ad valorem, the total imports taxes. Obviously, we've not even added the other charges I mentioned that long list, right? They'll end up paying 13.1 million if it's ad valorem. If it's specific, they end up paying what 11.3 million. So what will we recommend to the government? We'll recommend what ad valorem. So this is the recommended recommendation to government will be what ad valorem to government. That is all, really. If you're able to do this, how many marks? Eight marks in this particular question. If you're able to recommend that they should use the ad valorem to achieve this object. So that's a quick um, coverage of customs, right? But there are so many things that are under customs, duty drawback, warehousing regime. Please take a look at them, videos on those as well. So now let's talk briefly about excise duty and then we can call it a day. When it comes to excise duty, the difference between VAT and excise duty, remember I told you VAT applies to the supply of all goods and services and all imports, unless clearly exempt, right? And that exemption is listed on the fair schedule. Excise duty is the reverse. Excise duty does not apply to anything at all, unless that thing is on a specific and specified list. I'll tell that again. VAT applies to everything, unless a thing that is listed on a certain list somewhere, which is called the exempt schedule or the fair schedule. Excise duty, on the other hand, does not apply to anything unless that thing is on a specific list. Right? So um, there are people who, or there are some social commenters, commentators who call um, a v, VAT what a broad based tax, as in it applies to so many things. And they call excise duty a narrow based tax, applies to just a few sets of things. Right? So if that is the case, we know that what excise duty is also an indirect tax, supplies on what consumption. So, for example, what the law provides is that if you buy, let's say, a, like you buy wine, right? You buy wine before I even get to the rate. Excise duty is generally applicable on what local manufacture or what importation of these excisable goods remember i told you there's a specific list of items that excise duty applies to so when you locally manufacture them or when you import them then you have to pay excise duty right so there's a long list so um your favorite coca-cola fanta sprite alvaro all of those things are excisable goods and their excise duty rate is 17.5 percent of something called the x factory price right so even bottled water, if bottled water is made in Ghana locally or it's imported into Ghana, whichever one of it, local or I mean bottled water is subject to what excise duty at the rate of 17.5%. Take note that sachet water, pure water, right? Sachet water attracts a 0% excise duty rate, although the law listed as part of what excisable goods, right? Um, same such as um, things such as tobacco products to discourage people from smoking. Um, tobacco products have a very high excise duty rate of 175%. So locally manufactured tobacco products and imported tobacco products will pay a very high excise duty rate of 175% to discourage consumption, right? There are different rates for things like cedar beer, which will attract a 17.5% excise duty rate. Then things like um, beer that is made from malt attracts a 47.5% excise duty rate and all of that, right? Not to bore you with the rate, excise duty is applicable on the local manufacture or the importation of certain specified goods, right? Um, and we've covered extensively excise duty. We have a video series on excise duty. Take a look at that to understand excise duty in a lot more detail, right? Let's not bore people with the details here. So just know that difference between VAT and excise duty is for VAT, it applies on everything unless clearly exempted. Excise duty does not apply to anything unless that thing is clearly listed as an excisable good, right? So that is it for excise duty in Ghana. Please do take a look at the videos on excise duty. 
um related to excise duty something called the excise tax stamp so i'm sure if you pick any bottled water you probably see a sticker on the cover right so that sticker with something like a barcode on it right that is the excise tax stamp right so the purpose of this stamp is to ensure that what we reduce smuggling and we kind of have a revenue assurance that the tax that is due on that product has been paid or will be paid right that is the whole idea of the excise tax stamp so take note excise tax stamp is not a tax it is just a mechanism to ensure that what we are guarding against revenue of the main tax which is what excise duty right that is the difference between excise tax stamp and excise duty in case you ask a question to distinguish between excise duty and excise tax stamp so to summarize if you want to like i said understand excise duty any question do ask on excise duty once again my guarantee this time is not 175 percent but it's 200 percent now for i see any question they can ever ask you on excise duty we have it covered in our excise duty series of videos so take a look at that if you do have some spare time on your hands and you want to cover every single topic that may appear on the ICA exam. So let's bring day four to an end here. Really, it's been long. Um, let's, as we prepare for an exam, our exam upcoming, let's just take some time, relax this evening, go through what we've done once again and um, begin to revise, look at the different topics we've covered over the past days since we started, right? go through everything we've done um, look at examples we've done revise the concept revise the principles practice a lot more questions question after question after question practice within time to try to see if you can solve a full question that is 20 marks within 36 minutes right and remember always like i keep emphasizing that you need to answer all questions in the exam if you want to stand the chance of passing and once again we believe we can pass we believe we will pass we believe we must pass right so let's have this firm belief in our ability let's have this firm belief in our success come the may 2021 tax exam so i'll end today here if you have any question please don't forget to leave the question in the comments and i will catch you on our next crash course session which will be on saturday same time at 6 p.m so i do enjoy the rest of your evening and once again i wish you all the best in your exam bye bye for now